why lossless audio files often don't sound any better than lossy audio files. In the discussion about ALAC and FLAC as lossless audio formats that you could store your music in, it came up that I was saying that you wouldn't be able to hear the difference between a lossy and a lossless audio file in most cases because of the limits of the components of which you're playing them back on. A couple of things can affect the sound quality of your files, one of which is the digi digital to analog converter, the DAC, that's in your sound card, your audio device, or whatever you're playing back on. And that's definitely a limiting factor because they aren't generally professional quality DACs like you'd find in studio recording equipment. However, there's an even bigger, more common problem with playing back your digital audio files on both Windows and Mac. And that is that most devices don't talk directly to the sound card. They go through the audio mixing layer or the audio mixing renderer, depending on what system you're on. In Windows, you can go into your control panel, select the device, and go to advanced, and there's a default format. And when you choose the default format, which quite often is set to 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, or DVD quality, that's what all of your files are going to play back as. Now, CDs are generally at 44.1 kilohertz, not 48 kilohertz. So the mixing layer is doing a conversion from the 48 kilohertz sampling rate to the 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate and in doing so is creating loss. So even though you've chosen a lossless format, if you're set to DVD quality, you're not getting a one-to-one -one playback. Now, if you set this to 44.1, a lot of your video games are going to sound a little different or are going to put an extra load on your, on your machine because the machine's going to be doing the conversion between 48 that most of those are played at down to 44.1. Now, Depending on your audio device, you can choose anything up to studio recording at 96 or 112 kilohertz. And so you have other options. The problem is that because every sound in your device has to be sampled at the same rate so that you don't get these pops when it switches between or warbles when you're mixing the sounds, everything gets mixed to one setting unless you're enabled in the player for direct sound card output or direct audio output. Those are the, usually the two options. In which point you're just pushing the raw bits directly to your stereo receiver on the outside of your computer. Well, that gets interesting in that FLAC and ALAC aren't on the supported list of any of the you know, sound mixing receivers, whatever you want to say. The, the receivers. It's not one of the things that you can output over Toslink or Spdiff or digital coax or a couple of the other digital ways that you could push content to your home theater receiver or your digital speakers or your digital mixer or any of the other things that take that direct output. So then you're back to using either AAC or AC3 or WAVE, at which point you've just bypassed all of those ALAC and FLAC formats that you spent all of your time mastering for, which was the reason that I was recommending that you enable folder compression on your system if you're just going to play them back on your computer because you can then have WAV files and those are easy to work with and if you've enabled folder compression in the NTFS or in your Mac OS, you're probably going to get 40 to 50 percent compression versus the 50 to 60% compression you might get with ALAC or FLAC.